Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan. Today I'm going to take up this game is with your time and bandwidth. Today's game is God of Protectors Cart of Darkness. Scantily clad ninjas, a castle with tank treads, and meta jokes abound in the third game in the God of Protectors series co-op game. Is it worth getting some friends to murder effing goblins? God of Protectors Cart of Darkness is currently only available on Switch at a price of $15 or $25 if you get it with all of its included DLC, which I actually would recommend, and the game will last you anywhere between 10 to 15 hours. So what exactly is God of Protectors Cart of Darkness? Well, it's the third game in the Protector series which has the weirdest releases ever. The first was called Protect Me Night and was on the Xbox 360 Indies and is a banger for the record. The second one came out on the 3DS right around the time the Switch came out and now we have this one. The premise is simple. Princess Lola's castle now can move and her plan is to ram it into all the other castles until she's conquered all monsters. Of course, monsters aren't really into this, so it's up to you, the God of Protectors, to fight them off and make sure Lola's moving castle makes it to the enemy castle without Lola taking too much damage. Basic gameplay is very simple. You and up to three friends will pick a squad of three characters from a diverse group of eight within the game, and then play through four stages protecting Lola as she batter and rams down Minas Tirith. It isn't as easy as that, however, as her castle follows a track and you'll be required to not only fight off the throngs of monsters trying to stop her, but also get keys to open pathways, switch track directions, and build and repair barriers at choke points to manage the hordes of beasties. Combat is extremely simple, with characters having a normal attack as well as three customizable abilities that will take mana to use. You can switch between your three characters at any time based on the situation, say if you now need a ranged character rather than a melee one. Between each of the four levels within each stage, you will have a chance to upgrade your heroes based on the gold you get, with them all upgrading simultaneously, and then it's on to the next. After four levels, you'll get a cutscene and any remaining gold goes back with you to town and your character's levels reset for the next chapter. In town, you have minimal upgrades, most of them being unlocking new abilities for your characters. Additionally, you can find retro game cards with names that are parodies of classic NES games as you play through levels, which can then be equipped to each class to provide buffs. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this game's goofy sense of humor, drawing on all the tropes of the NES era and both lampooning and accepting them in entertaining ways. It's also worth mentioning this game plays up to four in local co-op, which is by far the best way to play it. So yeah, overall, God of Protectors is a co-op defense combat game, which is oddly similar to Dynasty Warriors, but with an 8-bit pixel aesthetic and some fantastic music. So what do I like about God of Protectors Cart of Darkness? Well, a large roster of characters with a whole host of customizable skills and abilities ensures that you can keep things fresh throughout the entire game. Additionally, stages are really well designed and require players mix up their strategies and actually dive into the tower defense and class specific portions of the game, especially on harder difficulties. And lastly, the game is absolutely boss in co-op, completely addicting and absolutely satisfying as you obliterate hundreds of goblins and other monsters. When it comes to the bad, the lack of any real permanent progression outside of unlocking carts and some very minor upgrades might annoy some players as you start from the beginning every time you start a new chapter. Similarly, the loop never really changes either aside from the maps, which do get a lot more complex and interesting with new enemies, but the core concept of defending Lola's moving castle and every stage remains the same. And lastly, while playing solo is fine, it's way less fun overall, and is also much harder, I would highly suggest playing this game couch co-op with buddies. As you know, a rate games here on a three-point scale, must play, maybe consider, don't bother. I think this game is absolutely a must play and is definitely a hidden gem. God of Protectors, Card of Darkness is a fun solo experience, but it absolutely shines with two to four people in co-op. While the basic premise is simple and fairly repetitive, the well-designed maps, constantly increasing challenge, and diverse playstyles across its eight characters keeps everything fresh all the way to the end. If you have been looking for that killer couch co-op game to play with your friends, look no further than God of Protectors. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Have you played God of Protectors? Have you heard of it? I feel like this game is criminally overlooked, especially with the 360 game being so dang good. I'm glad we finally got this one out in the West at least, so let me know what you think. But regardless, make sure you go out there and pick up God of Protectors Card of Darkness on Switch.